another misplaced pass again. Look, that happens to all of us. But what if you keep misplacing passes again and again and again? Well, if that's the case, you're most likely doing one or a couple of things wrong. And in today's video, I'm going to go over those things and also talk about how you can fix them to hopefully at least get back on the path to becoming a better and more consistent passer. That is probably still going to happen. You're still going to miss a few, but hopefully after watching this video, it's going to be a little less. And the first thing I want to talk about is focus, which I know sounds a little bit stupid because you're playing football, you're locked in the match, you're focused on what's going on around you, right? But are you focused every time you make a pass? Well, if you miss them, maybe that's not the case. Like an easy error here is to assume that an easy pass automatically takes care of itself. Because you play football for a while, obviously you can make an easy pass, right? And I've been there myself, I'm in a good position, but instead of focusing on making the pass successful, I actually focus one or two, three steps ahead. And that is where you have this built-in margin for error. So if you are where you are, and you are inconsistent with your passing, it's all about building up confidence and routines and muscle memory, where you focus every time you pass, you focus on the little details, getting every detail right. No pass is too easy to get your 100% focus. Because once you build up that confidence, that muscle memory, getting the easy passes on point, maybe you can then start getting the more difficult passes on point every single time. And at one point, you're so good at it that you can take your mind a little bit off things because that is when your muscle memory kicks in. It just happens. But another thing that could be a factor in you misplacing a lot of passes could be something as simple as your technique. Because if we talk about the standard instep pass, one of the most rudimentary things to understand is that wherever your standing foot is passing is where the ball is going. So if I'm passing to, or now the cameraman right over there, did you see? Passing foot was pointing in that direction. So that's something you'll need to focus on. Another thing you should consider, if you're doing it right, is where you're hitting the ball and how. So are you actually striking the ball in the middle, or just below the middle, to ensure that you don't go too low and start to lift it, or go too high so you kick it down in the ground and you get that dreaded micro bounce. That's also something you need to focus on. I've actually made a full video discussing all the passing basics, which is a really great watch if you're still nailing down the essentials. But the couple of things you really need to focus on is obviously having your standing foot pointing in the direction you want to make the pass. Then you need to open up your hip to show that big flat part of the instep of course, you need to hit the ball more or less in the center. And also, your follow through should be quick and snappy. Almost as if your foot is being pulled back by a rubber band. Because then you get that lovely, clean connection on the ball. And finally, you also need to make sure that your standing foot isn't too close to or too far away from the ball. Because if that's the case, you might have a problem with the height of your pass. Look, if my standing foot is too far away from the ball and I have to strike it now, I'm gonna lean in a little bit. And what happens now is that my body is leaning backwards. That typically means that I tend to hit the ball a little bit too low. What happens then is that I lift it so the pass is gonna be higher. And a high pass, all other things being equal, is just more difficult and isn't as quick to control for the receiver as a low, good standard pass would be. And that's kind of your job as the passer. That is to make life as easy as possible for the receiver. So if you're making like a standard low pass, try to keep it as much on the ground as you can. And that's something you'll need to focus on. I know for long passes, it's a different beast. You'll usually need to get the ball in the air to clear all the opponents and all that stuff. But I'm just saying that in general, getting the height right is really important. I've, I'll be honest, I've messed it up quite a lot myself in my early years and I can still do it. Because you might get everything else right. The technique, the timing, everything. But if the height is not proper and right, it's going to be a bad pass. And that also ties into the next point, which is the power and the weight of your pass. So like a successful pass is one that A, reaches the target and B, makes it as easy as possible for the receiver to control the ball and then progress the play as quickly and with as few touches as possible. And that is where the power and the weight comes in. Because if you make a pass to a teammate that's way too powerful, then it's really hard to control right? And they'll need a few more touches to get it under control. If it even hits your target, it doesn't go way too far. On the flip side though, 
if the pass is too, well, it's not powerful enough, there's not enough weight on the pass, maybe it won't even reach your target because it gets intercepted before, or it's potentially going to put your teammate under a lot of pressure because the ball takes longer to travel there, so the opponents have more time to come close and start pressing. So power and weight is really important. Height is really important. Imagine you want to make an easy, nothing's easy, but an easy five meter pass to your teammate. He's wide open. You get the height wrong, you get the weight wrong. So instead of nailing the pass, you put the ball way too far and it goes out for a throw in. Power and weight, height, it, it's important. But um, there's another problem. I know there's many problems here, but even if you execute the technically perfect pass with the right power and the right height, great direction, but you do it at the wrong time, that can still be a bad pass. And that's the thing, timing when it comes to passing is everything. And you can kind of split it into there's timing for yourself and timing for others. Because when it comes to timing for yourself, let's say that you're off balance and you're not angled correctly. That makes it really hard to execute a pass correctly. So if you're not ready, in other words, that's a bad time to make a pass, right? Just, just think about it. Spend that extra split second on riding your body, get to the right position so you can make a good pass. When it comes to timing for others, you can also split it in two. There's timing teammates that are running. So if the goal, that's my teammate, is let's pretend is running forward and I make the pass either straight at it or behind the goal, that means that I ruin my teammates' forward momentum. They will either have to stop or even go back and get the ball. That's not good timing. The other thing is that if the goal is surrounded by defenders and I still choose to make the pass, that's a bad time to pass because they're not really available, right? So I risk losing the ball. So again, timing is really difficult and is really important. And uh, the unfortunate thing is that timing is also something you can only really get good at by doing it by practicing it. The fortunate thing is that you can just take a teammate or a couple of teammates, go out on a beautiful pitch like this, and then basically start moving around. So you teach your brain and your body, your muscles, what you need to do in terms of how you angle your body, where you aim, how much power and height you put on the pass to ensure that your teammate can basically run straight into it and progress the game with as few touches and as quickly as possible, like we talked about. Focus on your technique, power, height, and timing. And eventually, you're gonna get there. So, uh, train. That's literally the way to do it. And then use the tips I've given you. And then hopefully, with time and a lot of training, you can kind of get your passing back on track. It's gonna take time and dedication, but if you're watching this video, I believe in you. But are there other things that are missed in terms of getting your passing right and stop misplacing passes all the time? Well, let me know in the comment section right down below. Remember that if you need new football boots or new football gear, the link to your sport right over there is the only thing you should click right now. Except, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel with the notifications on, because then you should do that first. And uh, oh, if you want to learn some skills, yeah, you hoo they're in the playlist right down there. With that, I'll be signing off. Cheerio. What an awful outro. But hey, we cool.